we go. Hey, what's up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. Episode 189, Slimetronics. This week, we're going to be taking a look at combining slime with electronics. We'll take a look at a parametric lunchbox dividers. All that and more on 3D Hangouts. Here we go. <laughs> Everybody, welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. My name is Noah Ruiz. I'm a designer here at Adafruit, and joining me every week is Mr. CircuitPython Pedro. What's going on, everybody? I'm Pedro Rose, Creative Tech here at Adafruit, and every week we come to share 3D printing projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right. This is where we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics and make inspiration projects for makers, educators, anyone and everyone. Thank you guys so much for joining us. This is episode 189. We're going to do some cool stuff today. Let's go ahead and get started with today's coupon code is SLIME. If you want to get anything in the Adafruit shop, you can get 10% off using the coupon code SLIME. So check that out. We also have some really cool, fun freebie tools. Freebie tools. Yeah, they can be tools. Freebie deals. So go to adafruit.com slash free to see all of the interesting things that we're giving out. Um, yeah, check them out. Also want to give a shout out to all the educators out there. If you are yourself an educator, and you're looking to get some Adafruit stuff, we provide discounts. So if you want to do a bulk order, we can work with you guys to get some really good deals. So check out our landing page, adafruit.com slash educators for all the details. Alrighty, we also have same day delivery as an option for folks in New York City. So if you are in New York and you want to get stuff the same day you order it, there's an option for you. We have a Circuit Python meeting that happens every Monday at 2 p.m. exclusively on our Discord server. The link to that is discord.gg slash Adafruit. So you can join our Discord uh, channel and see all the different uh, rooms where you can get project help, share your stuff, and just kind of engage with the community. You're muted. Oh, oh man, I forgot to unmute. <laughs> all right, well, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> We're too deep into the show. Uh, so yeah, Circuit Python meeting every Monday at 2 p.m. <laughs> Check it out. We also have some newsletters, daily newsletters at adafruitdaily.com. You can you can uh, check that in. There's always audio problems, yeah. Uh, these live shows. So big shout out to everybody in the chat room. Thank you all for joining. As always, big shout out to Chris Sater who pointed out the mic problem. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> we used, that would have been the whole show. With the mute. It's hard to, it's hard to, okay, anyway. Thank Newsletters. You for everybody from around the world. Yeah, <laughs> for tuning in. Shout out to ML, Bulletin Crunch, Stuff with Kirby in the house, Just the Daz, Yaren, Chicken Z Gaming, Matable, mm. John Beniel. Thank you all for joining. Yeah, thank you guys. And if you want to check out the newsletter, it happens once a week. This one's a product focus one. Go to adafruit.com slash newsletter. I'm going to give another shout out to the Discord show, server. Ser server. So check that out. Again, link's up there. Discord.gg slash adafruit. Okay, well, let's jump into this week's project. Um, this week's project is switch the link. heavily educator-based. It's summertime. We need to shift gears and start working on some summertime projects for all the educators and students that are looking to learn science. Mm -hmm. one, tech. Of the, one of the easiest ways to get nice. kids interested in that is with gross out projects like slime. So, of course, <laughs> super popular among the DIY and education community. If you've gone to any of the stores recently, you might have seen that there is a huge section for slime building. So That's PTE right. had a really good idea of trying to combine these because they are pretty capacitive and making a nice little uh, capacitive uh, project using Circuit Playground Express, make code, and of course, um, easy use uh, drag and drop blocks to create some interactive um, projects with the lunchbox. We stepped into one of the $5 stores. It's like a dollar store that's five times better than a dollar store. And we we're surprised. Yeah, this is definitely a thing. There's lots of uh, sort of K 
kits and ready to go stuff. Mm -hmm. It's crazy how this is it's sort of like, a, I want to say it's like a, like a trend that's happening, but a good one because it teaches kids how to mix stuff together mm -hmm. to make interesting slime. <laughs> you can color it, you can make, it's a good little <laughs> DIY project for the young kids. So mm -hmm. um, we thought we would uh, combine it with electronics as Pedro was saying. So this is again at a, at a $5 store and we're, like, we're just like, wow, look at all this stuff. This is totally a thing. Mm -hmm. Not only that, they're all over at Walmart, like Walgreens. Every, all every craft store nice has their like workshops, classes and going kits. on all the time. So of course we wanted to make take advantage kits. of that and make a slime tronics version of this. Yeah. So if you go to the Adafruit Learning System, you can see the tutorial that we put together. If you haven't seen the YouTube video already, do check it out. It talks about uh, all the things that you need to get started with Circuit Playground Express, a uh, strip of NeoPixel LEDs and using all the sensors on the Circuit Playground Express to make an interactive sort of kit, like our Lunchbox here. Lunchbox so these is one of the main hero products for this. We yeah. wanted to uh, make sure that we had a nice little project to go along with this. We recently got these in stock in the store. Super awesome Ada Box tin box. That's right. ESD safe, so you can actually put your electronics on there. They're there not is. going to short. Yeah, we still got them in stock, so we get them while supplies last. Um, we were using this internally to kind of um, use it as a as a housing for our educators kit. Mm -hmm. It like comes with a whole bunch of Circuit Playground Expresses yeah. and alligator clips and all that. But we figured, hey, let's let folks make their own kits. Yeah. So there you go. One of the cool Ten things about this, yeah, price. 10 bucks is the cheapest you can get for this type of lunchbox. If you search around Amazon, they're about $20. Yeah, any like the Disney themed or like Marvel Comics mm -hmm. themed ones are gonna be like 15, 20 bucks. So perfect for having as a nice little electronics box. And of course, this wouldn't be 3D Hangouts without actually doing some 3D CAD modeling of the dividers that you see down there. Using the 1.6 millimeter chipboard, you can either cut this out by hand or just have a cutting machine or laser cutter cut this for you. And it does a nice little separation to have different components. In our case, obviously, we're using different colored slime to have that. And then you can also have this as a two layer um, yeah. stacking. Mm -hmm. You can put another uh, liner on top of that and then mm -hmm. put your components in there yeah, yeah. or put more dividers, which is cool. So, what does this box do? Let's go ahead and, and see what it does. So we got our circuit playground mounted right here. And when you open the lunchbox, it will flash the strips of e NeoPixels and it'll give you a little bit of sparkle animation there. So that's really cool. Got a battery, back, bat battery pack right here. And everything is attached with uh, these alligator clips. So it makes it real easy. So when you close the box, it kind of reverses the, the mm -hmm. sound effect and turns off the LED. So let's try opening it again and see what happens. LEDs are off, open it. You get a nice little tune. This lights up and flashes, and then you get little sparkles up there. And all of this was put together with Make Code. I keep moving the, the lead, so that's why it, it, the, the, Excel, the accelerometer is like, oh, I'm open, so let me run it again. But if you leave it alone like that, it'll stay on, which is what we want. Uh, special note about these NeoPixels. These are actually forthcoming in the Adafruit shop. These are special UV ultraviolet uh, NeoPixel LEDs, so they only have, they have three elements of, of uh, Normally it's RGB, three different colors. This mm -hmm. one's just UV LEDs, which works really great when you have fluorescent colors. So yes. some of the GAC that we were working with, GAC, I keep calling it GAC. Some of the slime <laughs> that we were working with uh, is, is UV fluorescent, so they're really glowing and stuff. It does a very nice job of charging the uh, UV uh, particles on there. So it yeah. does a nice and little that was grow. the original idea, was just to kind of light up the, the GAC. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until we put, it, put the circuit playground on here that we figured oh, we can actually use Make it more interactive so when you open mm -hmm. the lunchbox, you get some lights, you get some sounds. Yep. All that's done without soldering anything, without having to install any IDEs, which is really awesome. So you can just plug this into your computer, any computer, mm -hmm. open up uh, Make Code on your browser, and play around with code and, and play around with different um, behaviors. So if you want to have it on close, on open, a lot of different things. You yep. can tilt, you can do tap to touch, you can shake, you can shake it to do other things, which would be really cool. So let's jump back into the guide and, and just kind of break down uh, the project here. So all the stuff in the overview here, just kind of talk about the ingredients. Uh, these days, uh, Elmer's done a really, made, made it really easy uh, to make your own slime with this magical liquid, which kind of combines the borax and the, uh, the contact lens mm -hmm. fluid um, in, one <clears throat> little in one little bottle so Brilliant. that you don't have to uh, bring out all the different ingredients together. So it's just two ingredients, just that magical liquid and whatever type of glue 
uh, well, preferably PVA glue. Um, so yeah, here's the bottom right here. Like. And this is a really good job because of the fact that you don't have to have all, you know, powder all over the classroom or whatever you're having your workshop at. Uh, it makes it a lot more easier than having just two ingredients you have to just mix together. So really yeah. cool job on them for that. And it is already pre-labeled with all the measurements for you. Yeah, all yeah, the all instructions different. are there, but we figured we'd uh, break down some of the things we found, mm -hmm. which we'll go over now. So uh, as a, apart from the slime stuff, uh, to get started with uh, Circuit Player and Express, you obviously need a Circuit Player and Express, which is in stock right now. So if you want to get that, you can pick it up. It's a miracle. It's, uh, yeah, it's in stock right now. It was, it was out of stock yesterday. So we have this in stock. We also just got these back in stock. These are pre-made alligator clip NeoPixel LEDs. So it makes it really easy to connect these, a strip, a, an external strip of LEDs mm -hmm. to your circuit player on Express. So that's really nice. You don't have to do any soldering to put it together. But we have a little special trick for you guys. Um, later in the show, we'll show in the shop talk, we'll tell you how you can actually make your own, DIY your own alligator clip NeoPixel strips. So check those two products out and don't forget to use the coupon code. Let's go back into here. We got the lunch box. We got two different types of NeoPixel strips that are already pre-made with alligator clips. One has more LEDs than the other, so that's why uh, we have those two there. And of course, we also have uh, regular alligator clips sort of the male to male end so that you can connect uh, different touch pads together, for example, using the, the slime as a capacitive touch pad. So check that out. Let's talk about the circuit diagram real quick. It's really, really easy. If you guys want to make your own circuit diagrams, you can download Fritzing, which is a free open source software that allows you to make wiring diagrams. That's what we use here internally. And we have our own Fritzing library of all the Adafruit parts, including alligator clips, circuit playgrounds, batteries, LED strips, anything and everything. Those really so cool check it alligator out. clips that are on there as well. They do a nice job yeah, of clicking. Yeah, the, the interface is really nice. You literally just click. Mm -hmm. It's really, the, the, de the depth of spritzing is pretty good. You can actually design PCBs yeah. in there. and It's a lot of cool stuff, yeah. so check out so the software. Every time we, uh, Lamar makes a new PCB, we're actually making the fritzing diagram, or yeah, graphics fritzing to go graphics. along with it. Yeah, they're interactive, so all the pinouts and everything work mm -hmm. well. So if you're making a shield, if you want to get started with designing your own, uh, custom PCBs, you can use Fritzing. It's pretty cool. Let's check it out. It's on our GitHub page under yeah. the Fritzing Parts Library. Yep. Check so that out. Download those. All right, so once you get your circuit diagram figured out, uh, getting your code, uploading your code, making your code is really, it's never been easier with Make Code websites. Let's go ahead and go to the Make Code website. This breaks down how to set up your circuit playground for Make Code. It's very easy. You literally just hit a reset button, plug in the USB cable and then drop in this UF2 file onto the, the, uh, the flash drive that gets loaded up. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really nice. We also have this uh, uh, one, two, three kind of visual step in the Make Code website when you first get started. Yeah, it'll, it'll be the only time you'll have to actually drag and drop something off the desktop. Yeah. From there, it'll just pair if you're using the web USB uh, mode. Right, so web USB mode is still in beta. Hopefully it comes out soon, but we just want to let you guys know it is a beta. You are able to access but it. it's been working flawlessly for us. So if you go to the Make Code website, use this link up here. We have it linked in the guide and other places as well, but this allows you to do direct upload from Make Code's website to the Circuit Player and Express without having to uh, reflash it with that UF2 file mm -hmm. every single time. So check that out. It works really well. And then we break down um, step by step exactly how all the code blocks that are that are used uh, to make this interactive lunchbox, uh, which is really cool. So check that out. Everything's broken out nicely. Um, so if you want to print this out as a PDF or something like that for students, you can hand, do little handouts and stuff. Um, you can do that with uh, all this written up text, which is great. Okay, and uh, yeah. Next up is making the slime. So you just kind of walk through making the slime. Um, There's a little bit of tips that we learned along the way. Uh, the bottle actually calls for adding the glue to the bottom of your mixing container first, but I add the li magic liquid just so that I can float on top. It doesn't mm. have any time to actually stick to any of the containers. So I thought that was probably a better mm -hmm. way to do the mixing. You also want to uh, add a little bit at a time as you're mixing it. You actually want to have a third hand, a third human hand to actually help oh, you yeah. in case you get stuck in, in all slime. that slime because it does get a little bit sticky because yeah. it is glue. 
Um, definitely would not want to fall into a batch of this. <laughs> yeah, you might suffocate. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's a good little. Tip and then you can there. dress it up. You can add bedazzle stuff to it and uh, make it a little more colorful. The the mixtures that we had already had the glitter already pre mixed in there, which to the glue, yeah. Obviously, made it a lot more easier. You know, having you know glitter everywhere. Glitter yeah. everywhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, another Simple. thing is that as you're kind of making it, um, if you, you, you want to keep adding Magic Lip, you don't want to add too much, right? We added too much in yes. one batch and it became really tough and hard yeah. to kind of stretch. So the more you add, the more it's kind of tough it gets. Mm -hmm. So we the go to the overhead, well. you take a look at uh, the stickiness of it. You do want to have it a little bit sticky, but not so much to where it's so hard that it won't. Uh, be malleable anymore oh. so it's a fine line of trying to figure out what the right mixture is for that um, luckily they do give you the measurements for that um, you just have to play with if, the consistency consistency of it and we did notice that um, depending on what color glue that we were using or the type of glue we were using you did have to use a different ratio for that just so just add a little bit of the time and um, just feel it you know to make sure that it's still a little bit tacky but not super tacky Great, I'm just reading people's comments, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> and then moving on to actually storing this, you can actually use a Ziploc bag. You wanna make sure that all of the, e the air is um, taken out of it. Uh, we tried using one of those uh, like airtight containers, but because there was still air inside of there, <laughs> yeah. it did dry up. You couldn't burp this one, it had a twist top, so. Yeah. That's just a word if you wanna store this stuff. It'll probably save maybe a week or two. Mm -hmm. We have yet to to see it kind of die out, but you can always kind of revive it with adding more contact, not contact, uh, magical liquid. Magic liquid and uh, a nice filler. So say you That's added too much of the magic liquid, you can add some of the clear um, glue. Okay. So definitely PVA glue. Yeah. PVA glue, yeah. So definitely pick up a bottle of that if you are uh, using this in a workshop, just in case somebody adds a little bit too much of the uh, yeah. magic liquid. You want to be able to have them revive it. Also, you might want to wash your hands before you play with this stuff because you don't want like any gross food particles getting inside there. Yeah, this is definitely <laughs> gonna pick tip. that up. Definitely wash your hands before you're playing around with stuff. <laughs> it it tends to stick to it. So yeah. There you go. Of Open course, up a batch and give it a smell. It's like, oh, it smells like bacteria. <laughs> 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 All right, so those are some good tips. Back over to the learning guide. Um, adding glitter and bedazzle stuff, beads, sequins, that sort of stuff. You want to be a little bit careful not to add really small sharp things which is kind of what we did in our first batch we had these like little stars that were like sharp as we were kneading it it was like kind of because all the videos that we were watching people were adding like stars and things like that but um just be careful that they are not pointy you want to make sure they have rounded edges let's put razor blades <laughs> and exacto blades in there no don't do that it, some of the star flakes too are a little sharp as well, so mm -hmm. you might want to avoid those. So just kind of be mindful of what you're putting in your, in your slime. Uh, yeah, and then the last part, putting it in a bag and burping it. Mm -hmm. Or vacuum seal if you have access to one of those, which are pretty cool. All right, so let's set up the lunchbox now that we have our slime. Um, so yeah, these dividers uh, were designed in CAD. Um, it's a template. You can download the SVG file and print it out on 2D paper and maybe cut it out of cardboard or cut it out of chipboard is what we did. We actually used our Cree-Cut cutting machine to cut them for us mm -hmm. um, using the knife blade because it's a little bit of a thicker material. So let's go ahead and take a look um, at the process of that real quick. Yeah, a little Snapchat video for you. Uh, so this is the Cree-Cut cutting machine. Last week we talked about how you can use this in your projects. Um, really nice to have these uh, in your arsenal of making tools. Of course, um, you don't have to have this. You can cut this by hand. It just yeah. makes it a little bit more easier to cut out those nice round edges yep. of those little ta lift tabs so you are able to remove this from the bottom of the uh, lunchbox. That's right. Yeah, and it just kind of makes it a little bit more cleaner. Mm -hmm. um, nice little organizer. Yeah. If you are going to add uh, components for your workshops, it makes it a nice little way to organize all that. So this is black chipboard that's actually all black all the way through. Um, really cool. And the only bad thing about it is that it tends to leave behind a lot of fibers on your sticky mat. So just be aware of that. Um, next time, probably use like white right. or just like your regular brown chipboard. Um, but yeah, well, uh, after this segment, we're actually going to jump into uh, Fusion 360 and take a look at how this, how you can modify this design because we built it as a parametric design. So you can make a, uh, you can make it out of different materials, laser cut it or do anything like that with it, it's pretty cool. We also got this cool uh, reflective paper. Yeah. yeah, it's like a foil 
texture on it, which mm -hmm. just kind of gives you a little bit of reflectivity, which looks really nice. Which we want to mention if you are, you're definitely going to need that if you want to turn this into a UV resin curing <laughs> kit. <laughs> I guess This is an excellent way to mm -hmm. do that with the UV lights. Uh, cool. yeah. You can, of course, um, you know, angle them in different positions. Here we just have them all the way to the bottom, but you should be able to get these up here and on the top of the lid if you want to have them, um, you know, all sort of positioned all around your resin object to yeah. cure it. Another thing about the box, well, let's go jump into the, the learning guide as we walk through the steps. So yeah, it's easy. We made it so that there's some tolerance around it so that it's, it has a little bit of wiggle room, the bottom part, so mm -hmm. that you can pull it out if you need yeah. to, which is always a nice thing. Um, so those are the bottom liners. It's all in one flat pack. So mm -hmm. it's one file and you just download it and print yeah. it out. And we'll take a look at that in a little yeah. bit. So the interesting thing about the, the NeoPixel strip, because it has a sheathing already on it, it's already grippy. So you can literally just line the edge of the inside uh, and it just holds in place because of the grip. Mm -hmm. And also <laughs> the, uh, the dividers kind of push them apart and keep them separated. So yeah. it works out really well. None of this stuff is permanently secured to the lunchbox, which makes it great because you can take everything out and remake, remake your it, yeah. kit or whatever. So it's really cool. As I already mentioned before, even the Circuit Playground Express and the battery are held on by just a little bit of tack. And that does a really good job of holding both of these components since they're not that heavy. Oh man, this does oh, a really good nice job stick, of yeah. sticking well, on there. Well, you can always take it out. So that's yeah. great. This is a mounting putty from, uh, I want to say Loctite. That's mm -hmm. the, the manufacturer. Yeah. So that's some good stuff. Maybe we'll sock it one day. And then the wires are just, um, like kind of coiled, tucked the, coiled yeah. around, tucked into the back here. And yeah, so if you're putting in there, you want the your wire to kind of stick out there and not maybe over here. So I mean, it could be on the other side. The position of it. Yeah. You got them in your lunchbox, yeah. <laughs> oh, shout out to Daryl. Thank you so much for the comment. They like the, uh, the videos. He likes the videos. Cool. So back over to the learning guide. Once it's pretty easy to kind of uh, position this wherever you want. Um, the strict playground and the battery pack. You could also pick a different battery pack if you want, but mm -hmm. this is going to last a while, so it's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, it's a lot more safe too yeah. for many dings or um, any droppage, anything mm -hmm. like that. And that's kind of the end of the guide, really. Um, a lot of different things you can do with it. Um, of course, because these are all modeled inside of Fusion 360, yeah. you are able to adjust the parameters to resize these if you get a different size box or something like that. Yeah. A nice little quick segment on that. Layer by layer time. So let's go ahead and jump into Fusion 360. That's the design software that we use uh, to model all of our parts. So if we just take a quick tunnel view into there, here we go. So this is the design file. Again, it's linked in the guide. Um, so what we have here is a, a, two, a two by three sort of grid. And we have a bottom and a top piece. And the real thing that you want to change here is the way these, these dividers intersect with each other is they have these little slots. So what I'll do is I'll right click on this one and say isolate. So I can only see that one. And if we look at it straight on, you can see that these little slits, they, um, the, the slits are actually the same size as the thickness of the material because when you intersect them, um, they'll, uh, they'll hold each other because they're, they're using the same, uh, the, the size of the slit, the exact same size as the thickness of the material. So if you are making this out of a different type of material, you will have to update that slit. But a really easy way to do it is we actually have, if we come down here into the user parameters window, here you can see all the user parameters that we set up. The main one that you want to focus on is the thickness. So right now I have it set to 1.6, but let's say I have a, uh, a 1 8 inch uh, piece of acrylic. Maybe I want to laser cut this. So you would put um, uh, an eighth of an inch in millimeters is 3.17, I believe. We can do one eighth inch to millimeters, and yeah, 317. That works well. And I've already I've already hit entered into the to the update, and then I'll hit OK. And now it's updated with the thicker material. You can actually see that it is thicker. And if we right click isolate, you can see that the the slits have also updated. The fillets are maintained. And that's just really awesome. Very so you nice. can come here and make all sorts of different modifications uh, without having to jump into a sketch, for example, um, and, and make that change. What we also have is, of course, if, uh, if your tolerances want to, if you want to make your tolerances a little bit tighter, you can change the length, you can change the height. Maybe I want to make this taller. Instead of 30, I can increase the heightness, and you'll notice that the, um, 
Let me right click again, isolate. You'll see that the slits actually increased. The slits will always be half of the length of the height of the divider because that's the way it kind of intersects with it. So that works really well. And then if we right click, isolate the width, you'll see that the slits are actually uh, coming from the bottom as opposed to the top. And that's just kind of the way the, this, uh, this design works. So let me do right click, isolate, and you'll see that the slits are actually going on the bottom because uh, that's kind of how they, they get slit slotted in there. So cool, so that's pretty much it. Again, this is a free download. One last thing I want to talk about is the way you can make um, a flat pack. So a flat pack is basically uh, a way to take your 3D design and flatten everything. everything for a cutting machine. Whether it's a laser cutter or a vinyl cutter, you're going to want to do this process. So, Or if you're just printing it out on an on inkjet paper, printer, yeah. you want to make sure everything is all nice, one little pack. That's right. And uh, I did a little bit of work here. So I'm going to undo everything <laughs> and show you what the... Uh, you know what's easier? Probably just to close it and then open it. Uh, so if you do modify the length and the width, uh, you want to you want to reposition some of the um, some of the solids inside of the flat pack. So this is what the flat pack looks like before I modified everything, and it's basically just flatting it, just taking all the uh, the pieces and flatting them out and, and kind of arranging them so, so that they can be cut. And yeah, rotating them as well. Okay. Yeah. So what I did was I made one sketch. If we go come down here, hide the bodies. The bodies are actually um, copies copy instances of the original components. So if we modify uh, the thickness of the material, exam for example, keep your eye on that, you'll see that the slits update with that flat pack. So it's a really good workflow of uh, coming in here and modifying your parameters. You don't want to have to keep making, uh, keep exporting out um, DXF files for each individual yeah. part. So making this flat pack this way uh, works really well. And uh, again, uh, you can come down here to the sketches and just get this one uh, DXF file and then export that out for your laser cutter or your vinyl cutter or your 2D printer. Or, so that works out well. Or inside of uh, Inkscape, Illustrator, any vector program any vector and program. edit any of those from yeah. there. Or maybe you want to CNC mill it so you can there you go. Um, set up your toolpaths and whatever CAM software you use. So uh, really nice. I think this works out well. So again, you can download this uh, using the link in the description which I have also in the guide, which I'll go down there. So there you go. That's our sort of CAD segment. Check it out. Also, if you want to download, uh, maybe you want to design a 3D printed case for your Circuit Playground Express, well, we have all of our CAD files on GitHub. Mm -hmm. So go to github.com slash Adafruit and then search for CAD parts, and these are all the CAD parts. Um, if you want to contribute to it, you can as well. You can submit a pull request um, and uh, let me know so I can add some parts to it. But they're all in Fusion 360 um, source files, so you can export them out of Fusion 360 yep. as a STL or a step file or whatever file you prefer uh, for your CAD package. And you can get the educational discount, uh, educational version for free. Do you want to clear that up in the chat room? Yeah. We're asking. Yeah, Fusion 360 is is a free piece of software. Uh, you get uh, educational license when you sign up for the Autodesk account, and uh, it works for a year, and then it re you can renew it every year free as yeah. an educator. You're basically just clicking on a button to, yeah. to quote unquote renew. Mm -hmm. So it works really well, and it gets updates frequently, so that works really well. There's actually an update that came out yesterday, which uh, I really like. So check it out. That is our Labor Lair segment. Now we're going to jump into, I believe, shop talk. We'll do some shoppy talkiness. This week's shop talk is for Google projects. You might see me wearing one of these. We're going to yeah. be sending this out to the Sorry, Python team. So we're going to do some prototyping on using vinyl with yeah. the pre-cut. Yeah, so these are all t-shirts that we uh, ironed on. Mm -hmm. uh, so we cut these designs out of our pre-cut machine over there in the back, yep. which we showed you guys how to do live. So I took those very same vector files that we released. So we released all the vector files for our Circuit Playroom characters. This is our newest addition, Sparky. Mm -hmm. He comes out whenever electronics You are, hook up the wrong thing. When you hook up the wrong <laughs> thing. Um, so that was really fun. It's layered with a bunch of different materials. So let's go ahead and look at that. 
So that was the big test on, uh, for this, actually, doing the multi-layer color for these. Yeah, so it's uh, pretty much, again, it's the same gr uh, vector graphics, no modifications done. And it, but instead of paper, we're using iron-on. This is high-temperature iron-on, so it will last a lot, a lot of washes, or at least we'll see <laughs> uh, if it's applied correctly. So this is a Cicer brand of vinyl. I like to get my vinyl from 651vinyl.com or you can get it from another different supplier. But uh, same deal here, you cut out uh, each layer uh, from a different, using a different color of material. In this case, it's HT vinyl. And what I'm doing is I'm using, uh, the, the Cree Cut makes their own uh, hot press. Uh, instead of using an iron, an iron just doesn't, it's a little bit small and it has a weird shape and it doesn't really evenly distribute uh, the heat. So I got our, we got ourselves, uh, one of these uh, easy presses, which is basically a giant square um, iron, <laughs> but it evenly distributes the heat so you can get a lot better um, uh, results with it. And um, it has like a little timer on it so you can just kind of press it down onto your shirt or whatever apparel you're working with uh, and get these really nice uh, quality, high quality uh, presses uh, using this iron on vinyl. So yeah, so that's just kind of a quick look at the process of it. Um, still learning uh, from, from our mistakes, like just uh, follow, you know, the heat temperature and how long to press and you got to press it firmly mm -hmm. and whether you want to do a cold peel or hot peel. But this, uh, I really like this type of vinyl because it, it, it works with both hot or cold presses. That's just when you peel back the, the backing of it. I just uh -huh. want to point out the cool little technique you're using here for aligning all of the bits together, just combining it all into one and having the back, uh, uh, the, the very most back layer show through to create the eyes here. Yeah, yep. And anyway, that's all covered in our cutting vinyl tutorial that we talked about last week. Um, so yeah, this, applying uh, those, those graphics and those techniques uh, to a different medium is really, really cool. Um, so yeah, again, as Pedro was saying in the beginning, we're, we're working on making CircuitPython t-shirts for our core CircuitPython team. So there's a lot of different types of vinyl as well. Um, a lot of fun vinyl. So here I have a, a lady shirt and we're playing around with this really thick glitter vinyl iron on. So there's the CircuitPython logo. There's Blinka. And if it focuses, we can get a really close look at the cutting on this. This is such a clean cut. Works really well. I and again, this is a Cicer that glitter. high temperature glitter. Yeah. It makes it look like there's already LEDs or something making oh, this it. This looks great. Yeah, definitely like awesome. that. So one of the tips that we found is that you want to flip the, when, when you're first applying the iron, you want to flip it over and then heat press it again for like 15 seconds mm -hmm. uh, on the back here so it adheres very well. Another tip is if you're layering glitter vinyl, you want to have the glitter vinyl be the very top layer. It doesn't work so well as a base layer. So if you're trying to attach uh, regular vinyl onto this glitter surface, it doesn't really adhere well. It'll stick but it, it will come off out of the wash. So uh, you want to have this be your top layer. So that's what I learned. A lot of different things to learn as well. And uh, I don't know, maybe we'll make a project out of it. But for now, it's more for like internal. Yep. Super cool. And we will be releasing some of the <laughs> artwork files so you can actually create your own if you are going to a PyCon or a cool conference and you want to represent that's right. Have this yeah, the, the stuff's soon. already out. The at least the characters. So if you want to make a blink a t-shirt or a sparky t-shirt, the graphics are already up on the the, uh, the the learning guide. And speaking of learning guides, I just want to let you guys know we we are building up a really nice assortment of Make Code guides. So if you use the link uh, that I'll put in the description, uh, this is a category link to all the uh, to all the Make Code projects that we're working on. So a lot of great ones. Uh, MakeCode has been out for, I want to say, like a year now, and it just keeps getting better and better. We recently got support for the new Cricut board, which we'll be diving into in the coming weeks. If you missed that, uh, you can check out uh, last week's show. We tell you how to actually add that in there. It is still as a beta, right. but you are able to add it in there if you want to beta test the Cricut version of the MakeCode for that. Do some interactive projects with that. You got it. All right, well, let's move on to Community Makes. We're, we're getting through the show pretty quick. So this week, we got a couple cool makes. Um, this week, we 3D printed a design from the community. Let's take a look at that. 
This is our Time Lapse Tuesday segment. We do a time lapse video every Tuesday. Check it out. We post it up on YouTube and Instagram, and I believe other places. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, this is a multi-purpose castle planter, but it could also be used as like sort of a holder for pins and maybe LEDs and uh, components and things. Oh, you put some Legos in there? Nice. Some Legos in there, some of my styluses in there for the Wacom pen and for the capacitive touch pen for the tablets and phones. Sweet. Yep. Super cool little easy design. Designed by 3D Print Base mm -hmm. on Thingiverse. Here it is in on hand. Um, yeah, tell us about the print. What yeah, do, so the default scale for this should fit on most 3D print beds, and they did a nice job of having really nice um, uh, what's textures, it called? Like, details. What? Textures, details. So the you are able to paint hefty, these. It nice. It's a nice um, a width for this as well. And like, like he was showing in his pictures, you are able to use this as a oh, planter for like succulents and things like that. You are gonna have to add drainage to the bottom though. Uh, so you don't water lodge your oh, plants. Fun. DIY your own drain hole. Mm -hmm. Whether you want to make it, you know, this or this, you got to add your own yeah, stuff. Yeah, I definitely wanted to do the succulent one, but we were completely out of plants. <laughs> <laughs> so the next best thing as a desk accessory is just to hold all of your uh, pens and all the things you might have around your work area. Oh, sweet. He has an Etsy shop too. So if you want to, if you don't have a 3 print, you can um, order, you can either order it or have him ship to you via mm -hmm. Etsy. That's cool. Another thing that caught my eye too is it looks like a really cool dice holder for D and D games yeah, and the like. Be. Nice little scenery for that. Okay, so, yeah, I like how the gravel goes along the edges yeah, here. Yeah, definitely Chinese. enough room for that, and you don't have to scale it up. Uh, it's a really good size that he uh, uploaded it at. Yeah, so we can link it in the description if you want to download this yourself. Mm -hmm. It's a free download on Thingiverse. Shout out to 3D Printer Base. Yeah, really cool. For sharing this design. Nice textures on the uh, bricks and all that here. He designed this inside of Blender, I believe. Yeah. Pretty cool. The door does not open, but you can definitely modify that if huh. you need. Really cool. Really cool. Sweet. Awesome job on that. Right. Also in Community Makes, we got a remix of one of our past projects. Yes, yeah, so uh, what is this? Chillman408 did a nice little remix of the Tesla Model 3 Qi charger for the Amazon Ultra Slim charger. I think this is the 2.4 amp charger, so it should be a little bit more faster than the default ones that we have in the store. And it does come as a dual model. This is great. I didn't think anybody would, would do this, but hey, they did and it. And he did the dual extrusion on like, it too. He, for step one, get model three. Like that's crazy. <laughs> Which is a little bit of a weight. Hopefully yeah. it's like it's an inspirational it's a nice idea. Line. It's like, oh yeah, I can use TPU. This is flexible filament, mm -hmm. right? 3D printed. Yes. Uh, to perfectly fit into the console of your of your vehicle. Mm -hmm. So you can have wireless charging because you have uh, USB charging uh, ports right beneath that little layer. Yeah, and which did, works really well. And you did simplify the design, so he has two versions of this available. One that's a two-piece. It's a one piece, depending on what the size of your print bed is. Oh, he uploaded another thing. Sweet. Yeah, and he linked to the Amazon. He linked to the Learn Guide as well. He even has a revision history. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Something about the TPU added to a cheaper alternative charger. Nice. Version 5 adds the Tesla logo. Oh, cool. We didn't want the Tesla logo. We just like their lightning bolt. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want to. Tesla logos everywhere. There's enough T's on the car. I know, there's enough T's <laughs> in the car. But and then you have a great. single extrusion one as well. It's pretty yeah. cool. Nice little insert there for it. Pretty sweet. I should be able to pick these up relatively cheap. The uh, 2.4 yeah. amp. It's such a chargers. good uh, uh, sort of exercise in CAD modeling. Mm -hmm. So if you have students or something, tell them to, hey, make a custom thing for your thing. Mm -hmm. Whether it's charging your phone, it's definitely a, a sort of a practical use of 3D printing. Good use of kind of modeling techniques, measuring things, fitting, prototyping. There's so much in here. And then again, customizing it by the design or even just the color choice that you uh, pick. Right. So you can pick your level of complexity if you want. Yeah. <laughs> and moving on to another really cool build. This is crazy. Great this is make here. a great timing for yeah. E3's uh, 76 or Volt 76 announcement. Yeah. It is a Raspberry Pi boy. Raspberry Pi Boy? <laughs> yeah. Designed a couple years ago. Pip Boy. Pip Boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pie Boy. So, just really <laughs> excellent. This is done from Ramblin uh, Ray on Thingiverse. He posted this to me. Lovely work on the post processing. This is really, really phenomenal. 
And you got the software to run. That is, is the most phenomenal hard. part yeah. about this since the software bit, is yeah, you a have to underbaked. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't really written the, the best <laughs> by me. Um, but other than that, the, the post processing and, and just wiring it and getting it all together, it looks mm. really awesome. If anything, uh, you so this will is one of the more harder projects because it requires so much 3D printing and lots of a sanding, ton and lots of 3D printing, of, lots of care, and passion goes into making yeah. something this cool. If anything, you could just use it as a wrist wearable Raspberry Pi computer. It's just a cool Raspberry Pi, yeah. Cosplay level 11. Yeah, I like all the little 20. gauges and all the <laughs> detail. Yeah, cool. yeah. I didn't yeah, have any of this that. in my original design. That's so cool. It's great. Yeah, sweet. Like the, uh, and it actually changes the dials, and, or when you dial, shift the dial, it changes mm -hmm. the menu. Really cool stuff. Which, of course, you could map. Uh, it's rotary. So you, you're it's a, it's it actually a, no, it's, it's a, encoder, right? an, a, uh, what, is, what do you call it? It's just a switch, a regular mm. switch. Everything's linked in the tutorial for it if you're really interested into it. And the last make we want to share is from uh, Braddy Fulton. I actually got this idea. I, so this is a simplified version of the assistive tech switched dice roller. This is a dice roller, an automatic dice roller that's designed for uh, folks that need assistive tech to help them um, play games and do other things. Um, they, people are using this as a learning tool um, to teach kids. Um, you can do a lot of different things with it. But Braddy Fulty, Fulton uh, originally designed, uh, kind of conceptualized this first and then I saw it because he posted it in the AT Makers Facebook group. And I was like, oh, this is really cool. I want to do a variant on that. So I designed a little bit more um, kind of snap fit designed. And I used uh, different boards. But um, Braddy made it a lot more simpler and a lot more cost effective. So if you are uh, someone who's in need of this uh, device, you can uh, make it a lot cheaper and a lot easier. So uh, shout outs to Braddy for releasing this. Thing. This is actually the circuit right here, a lot more simpler. So it works out really well. And it's uh, switch adapted, so you can plug in existing AT switches um, uh, to actuate the, the stuff. He also d uh, made a better version of the platter for the dice. So it has like, these little uh, stems so that uh, it, put, it kind of rolls the dice better than um, putting like a grippy surface that's flat. So that works really well. Shout out to Braddy for sharing this design. Cool. And that's pretty much it for the community makes. If you guys have any projects that you'd like to share with us, please get in touch. We have uh, email links and Twitter things mm -hmm. up there. You can add us. You can email support at and they will send those over. Yep. Oh, cool. Sweet. Just looking over at the comments. Dirk Bulge X is mentioning yes, there is a new uh, Pip Boy for sale. It's under two hundred bucks. I think we saw the kit. What is it from Think Geek? I yeah, Think Geek is is releasing a kind of a construction kit, which I think is a super cool idea. Instead of having it fully uh, made, you kind of put the Modules together. Nice kit, yeah. Cool. Looks, really, looks like they did a really good job on that. Yeah, super cool. Let's see, John K is asking the coupon code. Coupon code 10%. this week is slime. Why can't I get to it? There it is, slime. <laughs> S L I M E. Expires at 11:59 p.m. tonight. Works on everything except gift certificates and subscriptions. For 80 bucks, yeah. Okay. Does that the take advantage of that? All right, well, that's gonna be it for the show, but we're not done today. Tonight, we have some more shows. Tonight at 7.30 p.m., we have the show and tell. This is where we invite folks from the community to come and share their projects with the world. And Lamar and Phil, mm -hmm. hosted by Lamar and Phil. And then after that, at 8 p.m. Eastern time, tonight, Ask Engineer. So we get to hear from Lamar and Phil, all mm -hmm. the new stuff that's happening in the world of electronics open source projects. Some secret products that are coming up. Secret products, products are coming out. Some new products that are being released. Mm -hmm. All that and more on tonight's Ask an Engineer. And then tomorrow, join John Park at John Park's workshop. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern time. John does live builds where he'll uh, show you how to build stuff live. Uh, lately, we've been doing a lot of cardboard projects with robots. Mm -hmm. And the and new the Cricut new board. Cricut board. So at least tune in for that. He'll be doing some really cool make code segments and a nice uh, bumper bot that he's been working on. Yeah. So definitely check out the Instagrams for all of the behind the scenes as he builds that. Yeah, and we're getting closer and closer to the release of Adabox 08. So definitely sign up for that. I think we have just a couple more seats left. Uh, once it's filled, we're not going to be able to add any more people until Adabox 09. That's so right. if you really want one, definitely jump into that. 
And a reminder from John K with Father's Day coming up. Uh, definitely a good gift for that. So definitely check that out and don't mess out. Yeah. Shout out to all the Maker Dads. Yay. Awesome. All right. Well, don't forget. Thank you so much for your supporting mm -hmm. supports. All of your orders, you know, go directly to us. We don't yep. have any VC capital, so we get to do fun things like uh, puppet shows and, and live slime. shows and <laughs> slime products. Very, very fun. So thank you guys so much for supporting us. All your orders really do matter. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, what, what is that? I play out the show really? with a segment I forgot to talk about. Yeah. Uh, how really good the capacitiveness uh, of the uh, slime is on these. You can actually build a little slime piano with these. It's yeah. cool. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah, so this was put together with Make Code, but you could also use Circuit Python as well if you want a little bit more mm -hmm. uh, speed to it. Yeah. Um, so cool. you can control the, the note that you want, you can control the lights that you want as well. And just a word about um, capacitive touch things. You want to have your 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 uh, your pads, whatever object you like, a little bit far away from each other. We found that if you have them really close to each other, uh, there's just too much capacitance. So if you look in the video, we actually only have two um, electrodes or alligator clips hooked up to our little divider lunchbox, and that was because if once we tried to do all of these, we wanted each one to have a different note. It just couldn't do it because there's just way too much capacitance going on there. Plus, the LEDs are shining light on them, yeah. so that's even giving more a lot capacitance. Of, uh, noise and hum. So by separating them out, you uh, you get a much more uh, better mm -hmm. um, kind of uh, pad that that will trigger either lights or sounds, which is just, really cool. Just wanted to mention that in case you are uh, going to build this as a nice yeah. little slimy um, yeah uh, piano. It that is one of the things yeah. to look out for. We're actually going to do a full video, I think, on this because not ju we're just showing like we're just barely scratching the surface. You can trigger servo movements, motor control, yes. all by just touching and stretching slime, which sounds really cool, right? Uh, so all the different ideas you can come up with is that you can you can start mm -hmm. playing around with. Um, but uh, what, another thing I want to do is just like hit do DJ mode where I just tap one thing and it plays like six different notes in, as a sequence because you can kind of build these like chip tune sequins. Um, using make code, which is really cool. So uh, that's probably going to be for next week. Yeah, check out how uh, uh, the capacity of this. I have a tiny little piece of uh, slime, and then I just touch it there. Oh, cool. So, so John saying in so you can electronics make a... term, you'll need to increase the dielectric for capacitance to work. Ah, yeah. So Slime that's actually says. something that's that um, uh, Mike Barella was actually looking into to mm -hmm. see if you can actually. Uh, lower what we thought was the sensitivity of it so we could add more yeah. uh, wires inside of the box so it'll yeah. work a lot better. You can try twisting the wires or using something with like a, a like a coax oh, cable yeah. that's shielded. Yeah. That'll help because <laughs> there's there's stuff everywhere like humming from the wall. Yeah. You know the 60 hertz hum that's coming from the wall will kind of Again, we're showing this just to, uh, yeah. for like uh, examples in terms of making like an operation game or something like that. That would be really cool. So it's like a Dissecting a frog or something, you don't yeah. want to touch the edges. This will make an excellent uh, guts and things like that. So, super cool. Ouch. Just wanted I to make it, sure that that was I'm going to make it say sound effects so when you touch it, it goes, ah! ah. <laughs> really ripping it and stabbing it. All right, so anyway. that is going to be it for the show. I just wanted to make sure we had that in there. Yeah. I think we forgot other stuff, but we'll talk about it next week. Yeah. Mainly the building of the oh, uh, alligator yeah, clips. Right. <laughs> yeah. That should probably be its own project because yeah. it's like, hey, why not? All right, well, thank you guys so much again for joining us. Don't forget the coupon code is SLIME. We'll have another coupon code tonight and tomorrow, so you have plenty of chances to get your order in with 10% discount. But until then, don't forget to make a great day. I thought you were going to say it. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thank you so much. Thanks for all joining. Thanks. See you next week. Yay. <laughs>